podcast i'm your host katie goodwin as always well not always but as a lot of the times i have a very special guest with me she's one of my best friends a former co-worker with the junior golf association and now going to play golf in her grad year i have taylor harvey hey <laughs> how are you how's it going I'm good. How are you, Katie? Good. I'm so excited for this. In case y'all don't know, Taylor's the one who like came up with the title. So <laughs> this would be nothing without her. <laughs> oh no, it was definitely a collaborative effort. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one day we'll be you, me, and Mia. I got you. <laughs> Give me the call and I'm there. <laughs> For sure. All right. So today we're talking about golf influencers, mainly about how kind of women are honestly sexualized in it and how their popularity is based on looks, um, that whole kind of thing. So as you know, we don't skip around the bush. We jump right into it. What are your opinions on golf influencers and primarily women? Yeah, so honestly, I'm fortunate enough to know a few golf influencers myself and kind of hearing their stories and hearing about how they go about things is very different than, I guess, the common golf women influencers. So I've been lucky enough to have a good person to look up to. Her name is Kelsey Ayers. No, I said her last name wrong. Oh, my gosh. Ayers. <laughs> um and I actually met her working at Orange Tree. Um, but her content mainly focuses on being a woman in golf instead of, like, being a sexualized woman in golf, yeah. I guess you could say. Um, but, yeah, I feel like at the end of the day, I get it. You got to do what you have to do. But there's a way to keep it cute, keep it classy without overstepping boundaries that could potentially be limiting girls in the future. Yeah, I know, because I feel like sometimes when people like are just solely based off of attraction, it really takes away from like, I guess not necessarily like what people look up to, but kind of just like the next generations of golfers now that like that's how people are like going nowadays yeah and to add on to that i feel like this is the generation of social media so girls growing up in let's say jgaa if they want to be a content creator they're looking at the stuff that is popular right now and it's about girls using their bodies instead of using or just being themselves you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so yeah, I think we all need to collectively do a better job or maybe find other ways of being creative, I guess. Well, I mean, I feel like that's why we've kind of like tried to break into this because we've seen it and we don't want to have that be what's spread anymore. So we're kind of like, okay, like what other message can we spread in women's golf? And I think we've really focused on being true to ourselves just really sticking true to, you know, what we believe in and then just going off of that and doing it with each other. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, we're going against the grain. <laughs> Come on, people. That's why this podcast is called that. <laughs> I still remember that dinner we were sitting at after the waste management. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were tossing up different names and I feel like that one just clicked the most with what we both want to do going forward so it was really just the perfect match it was and that was after we had like the best day at the waste oh management oh my gosh what a day <laughs> what a day <laughs> dream come true but like that's the thing is if we're like able to get to that content creator position that's our life dude don't tempt me with a good time <laughs> I saw it when I was at Pebble and I was like, this is what life could be like for us. And the fact that we could get there based on like what we're trying to do in the industry is even better to me. Exactly. Yeah. But you said you knew a couple of golf influencers. One, what, what was the one you said of the name? 
Yeah, her name is Kelsey Ayers. Yeah. Ayers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying it like that. Sorry, Kelsey. Love you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I met her uh, when I started working at Orange Tree. And at the time, like, she was still, like, a smaller creator account, I'd say. And since then, she's absolutely blown up. And it's kind of just amazing to see her transition and see her get better at golf. And she honestly took me under her wing. So it's really cool to get a look into her lifestyle and what she does. What has she taught you about that environment? So I feel like a lot of people have a question of, well, how do you get a bigger following or how do you grow your account? And listen, I still need to work on myself, but the number one thing that I've heard is you need to be posting like daily. Yeah, it's time. so hard though. It is so hard. And that's something that I struggle with, especially being a perfectionist, if you will. So if something's not 100% with me, I'm not going to feel comfortable enough posting it and being proud of everything that I'm doing. So that's something that I need to work on. I feel like a lot of people might struggle with that as well. But kind of getting over that perfectionist mindset and just realizing that we're all human at the end of the day, it's content. It comes and it goes. If it goes viral, then cool. That's your point. Yeah, but with viral, I was literally just watching a TikTok and it was like, viral means you like have that one video and you're not gaining an audience, but with that consistency, you're gaining the audience. That's true. But it's That's so hard. such a good point. It's so hard to do. But, and then kind of going back um, with this whole like, social media boom and the golf influencers now golf influencers are getting sponsors exemptions into tournaments what's your opinion on that that i feel like that's a hard one because from a sponsorship point of view like why are you going out of your way um to sponsor let's say like a golf influencer instead of maybe pouring more into the already talented and honestly overlooked LPGA women golfers. I feel like there's so much talent on the LPGA tour that kind of goes unnoticed because there yeah. isn't enough media in there. So if more brands start to look at the group that they already have in front of them, that would grow women's golf in itself. And then I feel like that would get more people wanting to make golf content, women getting into the game, and it's all full circle, you know what I mean? Dude, that's so good. Yeah. I know. I look at it, and I'm just like, why did you really get this sponsor's exemption? You know, like, who did you know that <laughs> opened that? Huh. Yeah. Well, then, you know, there was so much pushback on when What's Her Face page got yeah. sponsored like she's gotten multiple mm -hmm. and people are like why and i don't think she's ever made a cut wow which i'm not saying she's a bad golfer like i'm sure she's good probably like way better than me but like like you said it's kind of just like why are you giving someone with a million plus followers that spot exactly and like okay even tapping into college golf there are so many talented young women that yeah. don't have these platforms, these resources that golf influencers might already have. So why not build up the upcoming like professional women golfers, you know, like if golf influencers want to influence, leave it at that. Like there's no need in putting them in a stage where maybe they, I don't want to say can't compete, but that's not their maybe intended interest you know what I mean it's not like their spot kind of not I don't know how to say it but it's such a hard line but I understand yeah because it's like yes I want to become a golf influencer but at the same time I do like want to compete but I think for me at least I'm not ever gonna probably take a spot 
with the sponsor's exemption unless it's like a the um like a diameter championship that's going on in Tahoe. Like Love other it. than that <laughs> other than that, like I will stay away from the LPGA probably. Yeah, like, you know, I'll I'll play in a pro am or whatever for charity. One hundred percent. A spot at let's say like the US Open girl. Nah, like <laughs> I'm okay in the media tent, I promise. <laughs> I'll take that free food over having to grind out their eighteen holes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And I'm like, you won't catch me shooting nine under at Pebble Beach. Like, listen, if I could, yeah, why not? But I feel like there's, you have to be real with yourself. And I feel like that's what these influencers need to do in order to, I guess, be real. Yeah, I feel like it's just become a place where people are like, let me try to do everything. And then you turn around and flash it on social media and you're kind of like, are you really being real at the end of the day? Yeah. And you know what? I feel like with the age of social media and especially growing up and seeing the evolution of it, you can tell authenticity. It's mm -hmm. not hard. So when you see situations like this, I feel like my first thought is, is this a money grab? Is this for other intentions besides building the game? Because I feel like that's what's most important, especially being the year 2023. Yeah, especially for women, too. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not, I don't, it's not advocated enough to mm -hmm. women. And when like you said these women have these platforms and they're using it to you know promote beer companies and to promote a bunch of crop tops and short skirts it's like what are you saying that's very true yeah. and what are you promoting to young women golfers mm -hmm. but it also makes me wonder how much of your audience is like maybe like 18 to 22 year old woman versus this is gross but like 30 plus year old men mm -hmm. honestly i would say even like 16 plus like yeah. if we're being so honest i don't know like i've had conversations with um junior guy golfers and they tell me that their favorite women golfer is Paige, and i'm like why is that? I'm like, hold on, hold on. There's Nellie Corda, uh, right. Lexi Thompson, Rose Lydia. Sang, like, oh. and you're choosing me. Like, be so for real right now. <laughs> Listen, she's got a great swing. She's probably an amazing woman, but. We know uh, the reason <laughs> why. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> But then it's like you go to women's tournaments where there's like the top 10 players in the world and you have men and women standing there saying, wow, these players are really good. And it's it m blows my mind that people haven't recognized it sooner. And I think it tells you what they're looking at of women's golf. They're not looking at the true thing of women's golf. I agree. And OK. Going into, I guess, let's talk about, like, the pay and whatnot. Oh. So oh. I did a senior thesis paper this past, I want to say, spring. And I was looking into Cheyenne Woods, who was a past LPGA um, women's golfer. And in an interview, uh, I can't remember the quote off the top of my head, but she was explaining how she would get paid more for endorsement deals based off of her looks instead of who she was as a golfer on the golf course yeah. and i'm like wow like and i feel like as a woman when you are reduced down to just 
what you look like instead of who you are, that takes such a big toll on you. Oh, 100%. Especially when you've worked in so hard, like, mm -hmm. to go off and to be a professional and then to have just someone come to you for your looks. It's mm -hmm. dehumanizing, honestly. It is. Ugh. It's so yep. bothersome. I don't blame her for feeling how she does, and I sympathize with her 100%. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like that just goes to show maybe some of those, like, really, like, nasty-rooted traditions that are in golf, especially since it wasn't for women for a long period of time. Oh, and it's still not. I mean, you yeah. can go, like, I'll go to a golf course and still feel out of place. Yes. Yes, Katie! <laughs> but then I'm like, no, no, no. Strong, independent woman, I can do this. <laughs> it it almost feels like you have to prove yourself. You do. Golf yes. And I guess put on, like, the best outfit, make sure that you're wearing golf attire so that people, like, look at you as a golfer instead of as a woman golfer, whatever that means. Yeah, it's like, oh, like, she probably can't even play golf. She's probably just practicing to go play with her boyfriend or to get a husband or something. Like, no, I'm not. I actually love this game. Yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now watch me kick your butt. No, literally. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. And even going as far as, like, working in the shop this summer, I would say 95 percent are men yeah and within that i would say 91 percent is white out of those men and that's a whole nother topic but that'll be another, another episode <laughs> <laughs> um but i always get so happy when i see like women come into the shop and i'm like yes like let's go we need more women in the game yeah. and they're like yes da, 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 da. And honestly, women, we're just so tight-knit, especially in this golf community, um, that we have to be pro-women. Yeah, so. for real. It's it's just like when you see another woman, you're just like, yes, girl, like, come on, like, mm -hmm. woo. And, like, and then you get the men, they're kind of just like, oh, like, what are you doing? I mean, you get the few that are like, okay, like, you go, girl. But most of them are honestly kind of just like, this is our space. Why are you here? And they don't do anything to hide that either. No. Like, you can feel it. Like, you can. Stepping on the golf course, like, whether you're on the range, on the putting green, like, it's just this vibe of, you're not wanted. Why are you here? For real. And they make it so inaccessible to women. Like, not many golf courses have a women's club or a women's community or whatever it is, whatever it's called. And... You can't afford to be part of a women's club somewhere else. So at the end of the day, it's like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Okay. And going into women's clubs, like what I've noticed is we have one here, but it's only for like older women. Mm -hmm. Why aren't there more like middle aged women playing golf? And why aren't there communities for them? Yeah. Let's start one. All age. <laughs> Okay, when I get back, start women's club. <laughs> I'll be back during the winter time. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That's when everyone else wants to golf. Oh, that's so true. That is so true. Yeah, we live in Arizona. <laughs> no, literally. That's peak season. Yeah, peak influencer season. <laughs> Gotta do it to them. Yeah. But I guess one last question for you. What is your best piece of advice for someone who is trying to get into the golf influencer realm? Mm -hmm. I would say the best advice is I feel like you have to be authentic to yourself. Like, yeah. don't be someone that you're not. There's no point in that. And going back to what we said earlier, like, you can see authenticity. And I feel like you can really see true to someone's heart when they are who they are. And as long as you're passionate about what you believe in, I feel like that can take you so much farther than not believing in what you're doing and kind of just going through the motion, you know? So, yeah. Amen, yeah. sister. <laughs> you know, like, and obviously, put God first. 
Amen. Let's go. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Well, that's all I have for this conversation. I know we'll get into it more for later. Yeah, yeah. We'll have more for sure. But thank you so much. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yes. All right, guys, that is all I have for you this week. Join us again next week for another great conversation here on Against the Grain. With that, I'm your host, Katie Goodwin. Bye, everyone.